This is the New York Rangers Draft Preview Special presented by Montefiore, John Giannone, Steve Valiquette, Joe Micheletti, as we look toward Tuesday and beyond and what the Rangers are going to look like both in the immediate and longer term future. And guys, we heard John Davidson talk about in recent days the whole concept of having these first round picks. It's now eight first round picks in the last four years after having none in the four before that. So Joe, from an organizational philosophy standpoint, where do you think the Rangers are targeting in terms of this continued rebuild? Well, I, I spent some time talking to the general manager, Jeff Gorton, uh, the other day. And, you know, the thing that he said is that really, in, it, as far as he's concerned, not much has changed from the standpoint of they're going to continue to rebuild this. They, even though when you look back two and a half years ago, things were obviously much different uh, than they are today, but he says his idea is take the best player in the draft, forget what position he plays, just continue to build uh, assets. And, uh, and with that, it, I, think, I think the draft will be interesting because he did mention with that 22nd pick that there could be a scenario similar to the Jacob Truba situation a year ago where they, where they traded the pick to Winnipeg, ended up uh, being able to get Jacob Truba and sign him to a long-term uh, contract. I think this year is going to be so much different than previous drafts because of uh, what's happened to the to the salary cap because of COVID and because there's a lot of teams in trouble and they have to make moves with their players. And so I think we're going to see a lot more movement and, and I think many more opportunities for teams that are in a good position to do something such as the Rangers. Yeah, Steve. So the Rangers freed up some money, obviously, by trading Mark Stahl to Detroit and, and buying out the last year of Henrik Lundqvist's contract for this season. Where do you see this going, certainly in the near term? Well, as far as money goes with where they're going to allocate it, you've still got plenty of room for a Georgiev contract that could be three years. Uh, we know the cap's going to be flat for at least three years. That would fit in. Uh, it fits in smartly to the plan. Strom would be a great fit to come back and have that leadership at center ice. I see that as a deal that's going to work out on both sides. Maybe not as long as what Ryan Strom would want for security reasons, but it should be something that both sides can compromise on. Uh, Brendan Lemieux is interesting too, because talking about the draft, these guys, you typically have to draft and develop them yourself. And they were able to get him off of a trade two years ago from Winnipeg. He's a special player that will really help in the playoffs. This is a guy you have to sign, and hopefully you can get him at a pretty decent number for a longer term. I, I would gamble that way on Brendan Lemieux because of, I think, the intangibles that he brings to the playoffs, and that's hopefully where the Rangers will be able to enjoy some success next year. And, Joe, the, the other restricted free agent that the Rangers will address is Tony D'Angelo, who certainly had a career breakout season at just the right time. Where do you see that scenario playing out? Not sure. I'm really not. Uh, and I'm not sure about Ryan Strom either. And the reason I say that is because, I, first of all, I, I think that uh, Georgiev and Lemieux are going to be easy. I think that uh, those contracts will be taken care of and it's not going to be an issue for either of those two players. I think the question that comes in is where do Strom and D'Angelo fit long term with the Rangers? Because I think both players, they're coming off career seasons, right, as Steve mentioned. I think both players are going to want plenty of term and lots of money. And with salary cap being an issue and with the Rangers still in the middle of what they call this rebuild, obviously they're getting so much closer uh, to, to really being a top team. Uh, they have to then make some decisions. Do we have somebody that's ready to move up and take their spots at a lower price? I mean, can Adam Fox step up and be your power play guy? as an example, and he's already signed at a, at a lower number? Uh, or do they have a centerman that is ready to step up and be number two, where Strom is? So, you know, Steve mentioned term. I, I think they're both gonna want a lot of money and a, and, and a lot of term, and the Rangers are gonna have to make some decisions. Can they package them for a number two center? Can they assign them to numbers and term that fit uh, for the time being? So there's a lot of decisions that they're going to have to make. And I think those two players, it's really going to be interesting in the next number of weeks. And, you know, what, what do you think about Ryan Strom, though, from his standpoint? Wouldn't he want to just play with Panarin? He'd, he'd take a little bit less just to stay with the organization. Sometimes that's the smart play. I know. You know what? I, I agree with you. And, and 
I think it's Steve, it's always easier from our, our end, right? <laughs> to say, you know, this is a great scenario. Uh, agents have an awful lot to say about what a player should do. And so many players rely on their agents and their agents are saying, listen, uh, we're not going to take a short-term deal. You deserve more. You've had these years. And, and it's not like the organization doesn't like these players. I mean, Strom in particular is, is uh, beloved by his teammates. He's got a fabulous personality, and he's had that wherever he's played. And Tony D'Angelo is the same, same way as far as how his, how his uh, teammates uh, uh, look at him. But I just think there's so many other influences. But I, I agree with you. Uh, but we know from experience that if you're in the right uh, scenario, yeah. uh, that, that means an awful lot going forward. Final word, guys. When you look toward all the decisions the Rangers have to make, the most important one comes Tuesday just after 7 o'clock when they step up and make the number one overall selection. I think it would be a 10 times bigger shock than winning the draft lottery if it wasn't Alexi Lafreniere. So let's speak from the standpoint of assumptions and say he will be a Ranger on Tuesday at 7.01. What kind of player is he getting, Joe? Well, from everybody I talk to, and both on the media side and, and people that study the draft uh, also might be on the media side and other hockey people, uh, the, it seem, they seem to be getting a player that's, that has the ability to step in and be in your top six immediately. They say his attitude is one where he never talks about himself. He always thanks everybody else around him, his coaches, his parents, his teammates. That's the way, but he's got – He's, he's got something about him and the way he speaks that, obvi- that automatically comes out that this kid knows how good he is and he's a winner. And that stands out when people talk to him. So uh, I, I think that if they draft him, which I'm convinced that they will, that he'll be a top six player. You know, I'm hearing the same thing, Joe. And the one thing that I keep hearing is that he's Sidney Crosby-like with his work ethic. And he's always on the puck. And I loved hearing that because what's better than having a skilled player in your lineup that's your hardest worker? You've already seen it with Zibanejad, Panarin. This guy's going to fit in beautifully. And everything I hear is glowing reports, and he's going to be a game changer. And we will find out just after Tuesday at 7 o'clock whether Alexi Lafreniere will be a game changer as a New York Ranger. And we'll be here to cover it all 8 o'clock Tuesday night right here on MSG.